Well, you know, folks, here on the Bill Press Show, we are very proud to be uh, uh, very pro-labor and also to have the support of a lot of America's leading labor unions for our show, which comes booms out to you uh, every day. Um, and one of the earliest supporters and stronger supporters of the show have been the uh, Teamsters Union under President Jim Hoffa. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to welcome our friend, President Hoffa, to the studio this morning again. Jim, good to see you. Well, Bill, it's always a pleasure to be on your program. It's a, it, it's a good one. You, thank you, thank you. And you've been busy about a lot of stuff. You know, I, I think a lot of people don't recognize that the Teamsters are in a lot of different activities right this year, uh, these, these days. It's not just the old truck driver. Although they're very important, but tell us about some of the stuff. Well, you know, the Teamsters has 1.4 million members, and we are, uh, as we always say, that we are airline pilots to zookeepers. <laughs> and people say, well, what do you mean by that? And I just attended a, a meeting of our, our Women's Caucus, and I was so proud to get up and give a speech and talk about, well, you know, A to Z, airline pilots to zookeepers. And guess what? We have, we have uh, airline pilots. We have zookeepers. We have court reporters. We have attorneys. We have lawyers. We have uh, doctors in our union. Uh, we have everything. And, and that's the thing. We're not just truck drivers. We're a broad spectrum of America. And, uh, and that's really the way you keep relevant in this country. You just can't be truck drivers. With deregulation, uh, the trucking industry's changed. We're down to two or three major trucking companies right now. So, uh, But we've expanded into UPS. We've expanded into DHL. We've expanded into a lot of other areas um, that are really relevant to what's going on right now. So it's a fast-paced business right now. But uh, to stay relevant, you've got to be everywhere and organizing. We're organizing uh, a number of places right now uh, in the ports out uh, in California. We're organizing uh, Arm Armstrong uh, flooring right now, uh, you know, 500 people at one place. That's what's going on. I mean, it's you know, 500 here, 500 there, uh, and keeping our members uh, up to date. So it's a, it's a big job, but it really works probably pretty well. Now, now how do you account for the fact that the latest figures that I saw uh, that only 11 percent of American workers today belong to a labor union. Well, I think that uh, I see those numbers, too, and it's very disturbing. But I think that what it is, it's basically a changing of the economy. There's more part-time workers. There's more women working. Uh, and, you know, the Walmarts of the world have come in. There's so many people now that are working part-time that didn't work years ago. The, the whole structure has changed. And I also think that a big part of it has been, um, you know, is, is the, the trade policies. Uh, what jobs have gone to Mexico? What jobs have gone? And the answer is the high pay jobs, the good jobs, the yeah. unionized jobs. I mean, we've lost, you know, hundreds of members, thousands of members. And why? Because, you know, the guy making, you know, you know uh, $20 an hour uh, that can support his family, that has health care and pensions, well, those companies want to take those jobs, shut them down, and move them to Mexico. So the good jobs are gone. The hamburger flipping jobs, the part-time job at Target, you know, they're still here. And that's the problem, and, and the economy's changed, and it's harder and harder to get people that are working part-time, 20 hours a week, 22 hours a week, harder and harder to get them into the union. So it is changing, but we still have a tremendous impact. You know, politically, we have an impact. Um, you know, we're the backbone of the, of the progressive movement in this country. Uh, you know, so we're, we're very relevant right now, but you're right. The numbers are disturbing, and it's part of what's going on is the, the it's economy's getting bigger. And the workforce is getting bigger, uh, and our part might be just staying the same. Isn't it also true? And look, I've been—I'm a 30-year member of a labor union and, yeah. and and proud of it. And I know what the labor unions meant to me and to my family in terms of health care and all the other benefits. Isn't it that some of today's workers enjoy all the benefits? that have been fought for and won over the years and don't recognize that they wouldn't have those benefits today if it weren't for the union. Right? Well, that's true. You know, that's the kind of thing that we, you know, we say all the time. We remind people uh, that why do you have the 40-hour week? middle class. And, and why do you have overtime? Why do you have paid vacations? Uh, why do you have health care? You know, the answer is this was all pioneered by, by unions. And today, a big corporation to say relevant has to meet the standards we have in the trucking industry. Take it, you know, basically, we've basically raised the level in the trucking industry. Um, now, Grant, we've got deregulation, but we've raised the level. Uh, and the answer is people have a better life because of us. In terms of and, benefits and, and, and safety, too. And company will also, a company will also say, I don't want to be union, so how do I stay non-union? 
I basically have good standards where people are less mm-hmm. interested in unions. So, and in that way, we're rising. You know, that we're the tide going up all the time. Yeah, uh, and, and getting that message out is uh, is is really it's it's important. lost in translation sometimes. <laughs> but you know, we remind people always about you know how relevant we are and how basically and, and of course uh, there's always people dr- trying to say that uh, you know we're not as relevant as we were and we really are. You know, here in Washington, we're tremendously active uh, in everything that's going on here um, and basically across the country. You know, working on legislation that helps people. Misclassification is a big issue right now. Uh, one of the the big things in California and New York and New Jersey is, you know, employers taking a person that's a hardworking person that works, you know, 60, 70 hours a week and misclassifies them, you know, as an independent contractor, you know, sends them a 1099 oh. and says, in other words, you're on your own, buddy, Yeah. because so I don't, don't want you on my payroll. And that's the biggest thing right now. We've been doing things in California um, and we have tagged employers out there with millions of dollars in fines for misclassifying workers. So that's another front that we're working on. And again, just like you say, we don't get credit for it, and they might not be members of our union, but we're working to raise the levels for those people and to discourage employers from misclassifying people. You mentioned uh, California. Governor Jerry Brown yesterday signed, uh, whom, as you know, uh, uh, I worked for his first time around as governor, signed legislation yesterday which would increase the minimum wage in California from $8 an hour, which is already more than the federal minimum wage, which is now stuck at seven twenty-five. Raise it in California from $8 to $10 uh, an hour. Uh, going in the right direction, but s- still not enough, is it? No, it's not. I think in, uh, somebody told me in Australia, the minimum wage is $15. Um, you know, the, the movement we see right now at, uh, at McDonald's and people talking about, you know, a living wage, Let's face it, we all know you can't live on 8 or $9 an hour. And, you know, a worker going to work there might make $8, $9 an hour. They might work, you know, 30 hours a week. That means you've got to have a second job to support a family. Sure. How hard is that? Everybody knows it is. So you're, you're running from that job to another job just trying to make ends meet. And you hope that you have some type of benefits. Maybe I might get a little health care. Uh, you're no, not going to get a pension. And that's this treadmill. This, you know, that you're like that mouse on the, on the, uh, you know, you just keep running and running and running from job to job. And that's what's happened today to millions of Americans right now. And, and to me, that's not the American way. I mean, we can't have people lower. And the problem is in this country, people have we're lowering our standards, not going up, making people work harder and harder to survive in America. And you see it at McDonald's and Burger King. And you know, yeah. I, I have a friend of mine, a, a, a friend of mine. Uh, she is 72 years old, and she's working at uh, at Target, unloading trucks. Whoa, 72 years old. Yeah, uh, I, 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 and and she was off because she had a back injury. I said, Oh, yeah, back injury at 72. You might have a back injury, and and it's just amazing. And she gets some kind of a health care out of it, well, no, and what she needs. But, but isn't that an amazing story? No, it is. Yeah, and the the the. Uh, the fast food workers, you know, their their whole slogan has been, and around the country, I saw some of them yesterday on strike here in Washington D.C. Can't survive on seven twenty-five, which is absolutely that, true. Absolutely. They work at that, and they're still they, even even if they work a full year, forty-hour uh, work week, they're still living in a state of poverty in the minimum wage. It, it, we have to take a break here. Our President Jim Hoffa from the Teamsters, you don't uh, often get a chance to. Uh, Talk to the boss, maybe, if you're a Teamster member out there, or talk to the president of one of our great labor unions, uh, President Jim Hoffer from the Teamster. Give us a call at 866-55-PRESS. We'll talk about one of this, the latest trade deal, too, the TPP, uh, coming up here on the Bill Press Show. Stay with us.